Okay. I see it on the screen right now. <laughs> Call to order uh, the Water Pollution Control Authority meeting for Wednesday, January 17th at 7 p.m. Um, there's a posted agenda. Are there any changes? Mr. Vice Chair. I'd like to make uh, two motions. Motion number one is to amend item number three on the agenda to read executive session concerning pending claims slash litigation 131 Beach Road LLC versus Water Pollution Control Authority of the Town of Fairfield with Attorney Barbara Schellenberg. Possible action to approve settlement after executive session. There a second. Chris, all in favor? Aye. Unanimous. Okay, and I also have a. Sorry, yes. Take your vote. Are you going to do them individually? Oh. Didn't we just okay vote on that? Just wanted to make sure. Motion to I I'd like to make a second adjustment to the agenda. I'd like uh, to make a motion to add to the agenda under new business item C a discussion of I and I priorities and capital spending. Second. Second. Tom. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you, Joe. Um, any other changes to the agenda? Seeing none. One quick question. Oh, yes. In terms of the executive session, um, is there anybody not um, that needs to be invited in that we need to reference? I don't no. know the answer. The yes, answer is no, we have Barbara here. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just to make sure. There for the next. Yeah. <laughs> well, I should just to leave in a minute. Yeah. Does anybody? Okay, so um, item number two, approval of the December 20, 2023 regular meeting minutes. Second. Any discussion? None and no comments. No, no. You're voting, calling the guests. Uh, shall we vote on approve? All in favor? Unanimous? All right. Um, so now we adjourn to executive session. Thanks, Mark. Is that a votable item? Sorry? Is that a votable item? It's on the agenda. It's on the agenda. Okay. The vote to go into it. Yeah. yeah. It's got to call the vote. Oh, okay. All right. We have a vote to move into executive session. Okay. Is there a vote? Motion to go into executive session. Okay. Second by Tom. All, all in favor? Unanimous. Uh, okay. What I gotta do? <laughs> Put them in the lobby. <laughs> you're you just pretty. Yeah, we're you're just pretty face. Okay, sir. You're good to go. Thanks. All right. Um, can I get a motion to make? You come out of the executive Please, session. Executive. Uh, second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. All right. Um. Moving down the agenda, so do we have to vote then to strike the, that, or we just we move? Okay, so old business item four B to oh, yeah, right. Right. Yeah. yes, it's back in. in. They're not going to come in. <laughs> stuck outside. Oh, no one's here. Okay, we'll keep moving on. Match that one. to keep you all waiting. Okay, so item 4B to here discuss and approve the <laughs> new proposal at 81 Black Rock Turn <laughs> multifamily development. Second. All right. <laughs> Just want to make sure Mike can hear us. Mike, are you there? I did. He's calling in right now. You got to let him in, John. Not in. Then he's just muted. Locked. Oh my God. So uh, muted. It looks like. See, that, that's on him.
sleeping. <laughs> yeah. You mind giving us 30 seconds just to try to get one sure. of the engineers on? Thank you. Stating a ride from Avon. Pull in the two. It's Mark. It's Mark. Wants to listen. Is it? That <laughs> must be opinions. He said he was coming. <laughs> he, he called me last week and said he had something it's to store. <laughs> we'll just give it one minute and then we'll get going. Yeah. There's another user on too now. Here goes Dennis. Mark. Dennis Divert. Right here. I, I saw a name before. He fell over. Oh, I don't need to sign him. I think my dad would have made people in camera. Right. I'll sign him later. Okay. He's like coming every week. He gets like an award after he. If he does 12 consecutive, he actually has this little. It's a nice pen. I might <laughs> just slide over. Yeah, just just hit one of those slides over. over. Oh, that's that's my budget's not very big. You, gotta, you always forget that it's closed. Back to, well, I usually just leave it open. Yeah, that's where I'm like. Otherwise, yes. Yeah, so it flies the screen. Well, is it all black? <laughs> okay. And how many like like trying to select or yes, What's that? Chip? How many units? That's right. Um, thank you, Chairman Cheesy and fellow commissioners for having post road residential back to discuss our project at 81 Black Rock Turnpike. As members of this community, post road is looking forward to kicking off a transformative project for fear. The development of 81 Black Rock Turnpike represents a large net fiscal benefit to the town, helps ongoing efforts to reduce INI, and is a multi-layered example of a private partnership that responds to collaborative planning initiatives enacted by the Planning and Zoning Commission. Between the time we last met and now, we've worked on answering the commission's follow-up requests with objective data anal analysis. Our updated analysis covers three main topics. And this summarizes the report that you have in front of you. First, our wastewater generation figures have been revised by applying the same standard used by other projects previously approved by this commission. Specifically, the standard used to calculate our generation figures comes from the town's inflow and infiltration fee schedule. This provision brought our wastewater generation figures from roughly 55,000 gallons a day to roughly 37,000 gallons a day. Second, our estimates of peak design flow and pipe capacity have been revised to illustrate conditions of the East Trunk Interceptor Relocation Project once completed. To do this, Lantec applied EPA guidelines for estimating INI reduction to our October flow monitoring data. The EPA framework subtracts the average daily flow over a 12 day dry period from the measured average daily flow over that same time period. The difference is attributed to infiltration and not inflow, so the figure can be considered conservative. Applying this guideline to our October flow data, we can reasonably expect a reduction of 1.4 cubic feet per second. Subtracting this reduction from measured existing flow of 7 cubic feet per second results in a new maximum existing flow of 5.6 cubic feet per second post improvements. Incorporating Accurate's previously approved flow and 81 Black Rock Turnpike's proposed flow, peak design flow now represents 68% of the pipe's capacity. Lastly, we provided wastewater generation numbers for three occupied projects that are comparable to 81 Black Rock Turnpike. This information wasn't applied to our analysis and was just used for anecdotal reference. These projects are the Trademark in Fairfield, Connecticut, the Borough in Marlboro, Massachusetts, and the Robinson in Revere, Massachusetts, the two Massachusetts projects being post road projects. The average daily generation of those comparable projects are substantially lower than our revised generation estimates, which confirms anecdotally 
that our revised estimates are in line and perhaps still conservative when compared to these similar projects. Um, as we stand here today, when the commission has them for approval, we appreciate this opportunity and look forward to answering any questions you have. Thank you. Those other projects, sir, those were actual numbers? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, I think the memo we provided provided the individual numbers as well as the average of all three and then compared those individual numbers and the averages of those three individual projects to our estimates. I think what you're looking at might be the unit mixes of those three projects and it yeah. further, further discusses, I think that the average across the three was roughly 44 gallons per day per bedroom. Rush. Questions? I don't have a, Mr. Chair. When do you guys plan on uh, starting the project? So, <clears throat> We are planning on being in front of TPV next week for our final approval. We've received our text amendment, final approvals next week. We still have a traffic permit to obtain after that. Uh, our plan right now is to maybe close on the land in the summer or the fall of 2024. We probably have six months of design to get 100% construction documents from that point so we can get a very good GC price. So we're probably starting sometime in spring of 25. Thank you. You're welcome. Anticipated construction timeline? I mean, I know it's early. <laughs> yeah, um, for a project like this, which is a, you know, a podium garage out of steel with housing above, you usually get your first units delivered in month 18 to 20. And, and you have, you know, subsequent phases, usually two phases that you deliver it in via firewalls and separate buildings. But it's usually you will expect first customers to hopefully move in 18 to 20 months after starting. So we're looking at summer of 2026 is probably early flows into our system. Yeah. And we, well, I'm we just going in. They would pull the sewer ahead of that. We should go to the building. The actual flows wouldn't start until. Options completed. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's why I was asking. I want to yeah. frame of when all new pipes are going to be right. put in place. Um, just Mike Bardos is online too. Is here yeah, Mike, can you hear us okay? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Very good. So the peak design flow of 7.8 cubic feet per second, that's based on. The approved accurate 91.5 gallons, uh, gallons per day plus the uh, the estimate that we came up with that guys kind of asked, asked us to sharpen our pencil on. Um, I think that was a good exercise too because we were using the very conservative health department numbers, um, which are you know, generally used for septic but sanitary. Um, so they're, they're they those were very very conservative, right? Um, so, you know, we, the, the data dive that we did on the other projects, including the one that does kind of pencil out that I and I calculations that, that you guys use are accurate. Just for my clarification, 335 units. Did I add that up right now? How many units? 245. 245. Yeah. That's close. <laughs> it makes a difference. <laughs> and the II fee is a little less than a million dollars. Yeah, mine was a little more. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Thank you, Brian. <laughs> Any other questions? Comments, thoughts, are we up for discussion then? Just to confirm the uh, 37,000 nine gallons per day. Uh, that, it, it, that, that is a total of the pipes that I've heard. So it's 58% of the, the pipe's capacity. 
So that's the number plus that's the number with the PP factor okay. included. Existing in flow plus accurate's previously approved number plus our generation figures 37. Right. Represents 68%. Okay. That's, that's what I thought. It's more than Session? I'm sorry. 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 i Contingent upon the payment of an INI fee in effect at the time the permit to connect to the Fairfield sewer system is issued. Yes. All in favor? All right. Unanimous. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have a full team here. And thank you, Mike. Good job. I should have more questions. I know I have a full team here. I thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Nice quick deal. We asked them to have Nice right. job, Brian. Nice job. Team work. <laughs> <laughs> this job is not done. Thank you, Jess. We'll get on to oh, item 4C to discuss, act, and approve the application. Connect 160 and 219 Ash Creek Boulevard to Fairfield Sewer System. Hey, thanks so much. Nice, uh, nice meeting you all. My name is Jay Klein. I'm a partner at Carmody Torrance Sandak in Tennessee. I'm here tonight on behalf of the owners of two banks. Okay. Uh, the other side of the state, I guess. Um, uh, Brian Carey and, and Mike Alfaro are here to answer and provide the technical analysis, but to give you all just a brief summary of where we've been on this project. Uh, some of you have been there back in 2018. Prior owner of these properties uh, obtained approval to build uh, 357 apartments, uh, 340,000, 118 hotel room, uh, and 118 room hotel room, uh, 3,000 square feet of restaurant and associated area. Uh, my clients, Accurate Builder, yeah, the current owner, are looking to enhance the previously approved, the already approved. So everything that was approved in 2018 is vested, uh, protected. We're just talking about adding on. Uh, uh, what we're contemplating now is uh, increasing. I think you all see our, our special site here. Uh, the total density to 674 apartments, still about half the city that's permitted uh, on the property right now. Uh, and those apartments will be spread over seven buildings rather than the five that you need to call um, This is a little layout of uh, floor plans. Um, you know, uh, uh, what we were found, what we found, what Brian and, and Mike found was that the sewer system has ample capacity to uh, account for these added bedrooms and the added uh, hotel rooms. We're going to increase the hotel keys from 20 to 60. Uh, and uh, that, that ample room is really provided by, uh, uh, you know, the, the improvements in the sewer system that uh, we're hoping that uh, uh, will be made, you know, thanks to the DECV grant that Mark can, can tell you more about. Uh, our clients are willing to provide a, a $1 million guarantee uh, toward, you know, to help secure that DECD funding. Uh, but it's really important that we earn your approval, uh, of course, first for the added uh, density. So, uh, Brian and, and, and Mike can walk you through the, the numbers uh, on the capacity. So, basically, as we stand here before you, the one thing that isn't shown on the site plan, um, which is Basically, the big part of the project. This has not gone through uh, zoning yet, uh, but the concourse building would be phased out uh, part of the original phase. You know that this buildings aren't being built, and that exists under the existing approval for the 91,500 gallons per day. 
uh, the delta increase uh, based on the uh, increase in the amount of density of the development they're looking for is about 23,000 uh, gallons per day in addition to the 91,000 uh, 91, that's already been approved. So the total uh, for the entire project would be 100 and 123,600 gallons per day. Uh, basically, we ran through our analysis um, Bunch of different ways we applied the same methodology we did suppose road residential looking at the project understanding it uh, um, reconstruction of the trunk sewer line and post construction uh, so just to keep it fairly uh, fairly high level um, prior to uh, the construction of the east trunk line. Additional flows from this project, 123,000 gallons plus the uh, post road residential, you'd be looking at a pipe capacity of roughly 87% uh, of the current. Uh, after the trunk line is replaced, it's on the projected flow of 120,000 gallons uh, for this project and for the post road residential. Once the pipe is replaced, that would reduce it, uh, the pipe capacity to 70%. Um, we did incorporate I and I reduction uh, methodology that we used uh, based on each document, uh, which we've included the, the breakdown of the report. Uh, that was basically the best uh, methodology we could uh, find regarding uh, trying to estimate I and I flow and reductions. I can answer questions about that too if you have any further questions about that methodology. I, I do want to say, uh, obviously, we all understand that this project is predicated on uh, replacing the East Trunk sewer line. The grant is predicated on this project moving forward and the million dollar guarantee. Uh, it's been sitting out there since 2000, I think. 19 it's hit a couple of bumps just because of cost increase, as we all know, some design issues, but those seem to be uh, moving along. Um, that being said, uh, once that project is complete, uh, we'll be looking at the, the new pipe being at a 70% capacity for, for this uh, sewer shed in this area. Um, we don't know right now. Um, Jay, Jay was uh, discussing a little bit. Uh, we do need to seek all of the additional approvals from uh, conservation. <coughs> we need to seek a modification or a new permit. We're still in the process of working that out. Plus, it needs to go through the full zoning um, process. So, right now, um, this is in front of you because we need to know uh, based on approval from the commission. If we are going to move forward with further design. Um, that being said, uh, we understand that this project is going to be phased out over a long period of time. Um, and given that in the general statute, uh, commissions uh, approvals are up to good up to 10 years um, based on uh, the, the statute 830 8 3J. Um, so, you know, again, we all envision this. To trying to come online for the construction uh, during East Truck Sewer Line. Uh, there is precedence um, on approving projects uh, with the theoretical capacity of something that was done uh, for Sacred Heart. Um, that project, which uh, was home for the elderly, was, was actually approved prior to the construction um, and the completion of the East Truck Sewer Line. Um, they weren't allowed to seal that building until that project was completed. Um, so um, this this kind of meets the threshold that uh, we heard about at the last uh, commission meeting, keeping um, design capacity of the pipe below eighty percent. Um, and based on our analysis, we you know, it shows that this will work um, in future in the future condition once the. Uh, 
once the uh, East Trunk sewer line is completed. The other thing I wanted to, uh, during the last meeting, uh, Dennis Diver uh, made a pretty particularly, uh, I thought, poignant statement um, about the I and I fees and most of the projects that have been approved in town since they've been monitoring what the I and I fees is that there's there. They're showing that most of these projects are actually flow neutral based on the work that's been done um, with the with the money that's coming in for the I and I fee. So, um, you know, based on the flow monitoring we did, um, it, 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 in calculations, it it, it it works. Questions. Where to begin? Brian, what's the timing like between the uh, hookup lines and the uh, and the completion of the East Trunk? So that's really all theoretical at this point. Um, I mean, the design documents for the East Trunk line aren't even done, and the engineer book will probably have a two-year fill out for that. Um, this is this is the first step. Um, this is the first permitting step to. For this project, I mean, we still have to go to conservation, planning, and zoning. Everyone's going to have changes. I'm assuming, and either you know, we're we're coming at the highest level density. If there's any changes, we'd only reduce that. But that being said, uh, as I was saying, like you could put uh, stipulations in there that you wouldn't be able to seal buildings until the capacity <laughs> is available, um, and it's very hard to thread the needle um, when there's this much. Infrastructure improvement that's going on, um, you know, subsequent approvals that are, are required, design elements. Um, but we're, we're probably at a forty to fifty percent design on this um, at this point, meaning that if we get a w, WPCA approval, we still have to do enough design work to mm -hmm. bring it to P, P and Z. Um, so I, to, to answer that question. It's very bad. I don't know, but the way you protect yourself from that is to say this infrastructure needs to be CO. So we have to time that. And that's something we would be happy to take as a condition that the infrastructure is complete before the added density is, uh, is CO. So but above what was approved back in 20. So in the case of Sacred Heart, not to keep bringing this up, they, they were actually building before we were actually we were even out to bid for the pumps eastern pump station so it was it was a rush to get that done to accommodate the dorms and their heart they were they were it was you know came together real quick and i have vision you know unfortunately i vision something along the lines uh for, for this similar project but but ultimately the town is in the driver's seat um, they'll have an approval, but they can't pull, you know, they can't see a building until, you know, that, that project's done and you, you have the, you, you basically have the control over when they can, can, can connect. So they would connect, but they wouldn't be able to turn, they wouldn't be able to move into the building. It's not, yeah, it's uh, there's a lot of things moving for that, for sure. All the numbers in the report include 81 Black Rock. And that's correct. And so the 70%, that's 70% of the capacity of the new 36, that's 81 Black Rock plus this flow. And then you're assuming that there's some decrease and reduction. Like that. Correct. And if you go back and look at the literature, as Mike told Mike will tell you, it's it, it, there's no clear, uh, there's no really written standard on how to uh, detect the method methodology. But that is what we found is the highest and best methodology um, that the EPA provides. The only other point I'd ask with regard to what I mentioned, the Penny is the state statute. That's a statute that applies when we have a project that has 400 apartments or more. So that's why it's a six. So the project before us, that would not be applicable here, here under state law. We'd have the Penny to build our process. Any other questions? Okay. 
any other I just asked questions. a clerical question. I mean, we call this 160 and 219 Ash Creek. That's all the buildings, right? That's what we're referring to yes. when we not just this is 219. Right. This is 160 and I think 160 is also the point mm -hmm. where we're not looking at any that that that's down the road if 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 and when. So there's actually another development called the point that uh, was original retail. Yes, original retail. So how how do we how do we? So this project, if we write something a motion, how do we? It would be it would be for the hotel, and I mean I would just reference our report, our most recent report, and the flows are calculated based on um, the additional um, residential. And the, I mean, in the hotel, I, I would even go as far to say, uh, well, no, I, 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 I couldn't even say seven buildings. Oh, I will seven buildings on 219. Yeah, was it? Is this a uh, a this is a modification of the previously approved? Uh, the way it's it's a new approval for the added uh features. Project the, the prior approval is vested and, and, and set in stone. So this is for the added apartments, the added. So, so the original approval was for what, like 94,000, but that was for that was for the lar a larger project. That was for a small. Oh, so oh, no, but I mean, more buildings, same, same amount of buildings, less, uh, less height, less apart residential apartments. Well, wouldn't so it was 5, I think this kid. Five. Add it into the old. Could you add it into the old? What, what, or to the old? Is it set totally separate? Or I'm just trying to trying to see how you're gonna apply it. How how can you find it? Question is, let me ask the other question on the three million dollar EECD grant. Yes. What are they looking for for you to warranty it or whatever guarantee? And what, what, what approval are they looking for? Well, we're, uh, our, 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 part of our commitment is to deliver uh, the multifamily project here, and then we're backing that up with a million dollar uh, personal personal guarantee. Right. Um, with regard to the other question about, you know, what is uh, this is just my perspective. I don't sit on your board, so I, I give this with all, all respect. You know, we, we just want to make clear in the record that the original approval, that 2018 approval, is vested and protected. So as long as that's in the record, I, I think we all understand that. Mm -hmm. you know, that's that's what's what's important. I, I don't. I think if you were trying to make a clean motion, just uh, reference that report that we submitted, and the flows and the the apartment and the so the layout of the concourse building is all in there. But that report references 160. Yeah, the 60 hotel room. Yeah, yeah one. Well, no, 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 no. no, no, no. <laughs> Sorry, 160 Ash Creek. The address. 160 yeah. Ash Creek. No, but actually, the concourse building. Right. So that's a separate taxing parcel. Right. And this but that's is not included it. in. Yes, yes, it, it is, is included. It's 60 it's is included so in this. this. Well, this is the hotel, and the concourse building. So the way this works is that there will be apartments over here. But if you ever go over Ash Creek Boulevard, there's actually a, a, a tunnel that goes over through there. It was designed. So you'll come up into the parking garage and you'll actually be able to walk under the tunnel into the concourse building, come down and then go to the train. Pursuant to the existing TPZ approval, conditional approval, that is the next building to be built. Has to be built next. So the hotel. And, and well, also the the train concourse, so there's actually infrastructure out there, the bathrooms, the concourse building. It's not part of the hotel, that's a different structure. No, that's all included well, in, in one building. building. Yeah, it's in the concourse yeah. building. Lower level so is the, the lower level, and then the hotel will sit on top of it. No. The 91, I'm just going back to the 91,000, that, that includes just what you're, that includes the hotel also. So the ninety one thousand, the original approval, the ninety one thousand. Uh, that is a completely separate report that was done under LEA. It it had a different breakdown of residential to hotel. The breakdown is completely different. Um, basically, I, I know what you're saying. It it is was a completely different breakdown in the two thousand eighteen LEA report that was approved. But then, and I'll just because then you're. 
Uh, understood. You want to preserve that 91,000, but aren't we I got that. adding? You're adding residential and then an update more right over uh, 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 we're adding we're not adding we're not adding 123 gallons a day to that 91 we're just adding the delta 30 the delta 123 so so wouldn't wouldn't the approval be for the delta not, i think i don't for, know how i think for a clean i mean i i because I was this I do list this. Um, I think for a clean approval, um, to be honest, this has to go in front of planning and zoning. Just you know, we don't know if this will be approved in the future. We know that that other project is approved. Um, they do have approvals to build the previous project before the contention before the additional density. Um, so that approval is cemented. I think for a clean approval, um, you know, if this isn't approved through planning and zoning, it's not going to get built. This 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 approval will be loose, per se. say. Um, so I think the, the optimal thing to do would be issue a new approval based on the release of one and two. Which is for Hundred and twenty three thousand. Right, right. So that's that's really what we're approving. And it should be caveat that ninety one of that one twenty had previously been yes, the best. Correct. Correct. Okay, true. I think that's the way I was. Yes, yes. 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 yes, correct. That is absolutely that, correct. that includes the building that's already been built. There. That's correct. I don't do it for two years. That would encompass all of those or the site as you see here. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna, yeah. Why not? So I, I, again, I think in addition to, you know, whatever resolution you pass again, just some of the conditions we talked about, we'd be willing to uh, agree to as a, as the developer is that prior to the issuance of a, of a building permit for any portion of the, added, you know, the new, the new parts of the project, the added apartments, the added hotel rooms, uh, uh, we would, uh, none of that work could be done until the site is replaced. Uh, that was that Brian discussed earlier. This that we covered. Um, another condition that we'd be happy to agree to is that an I and I fee, you know, be calculated and applied for each phase of the proposed project. Uh, I think our, our I and I fee for the first building that was built was what half, almost half a million dollars. So, uh, and then a condition that we abide by the time period uh, required by the state statute. Uh, those are all. We think something that will give everyone assurance is that this is only done when the, you know, when the new pipe is installed and that we do it, uh, uh, you know, in a timely fashion. Subject to is this, this. So 10 year time um, period. Get reduced if town planning and zoning doesn't approve as many units. Like, what's the cutoff to change this? Move? So, in the oh, just, yeah, yeah. I mean, if we were below 400, then, yeah, we would have to stay. We wouldn't enjoy that statute. So, uh, but hopefully, you know, our our building plan calls for a, a, a six hundred forty or six hundred. The million dollars you're proposed to backstop. Uh, that's backstopping the state funding. Certainly, yeah, yeah. with the DCD. DCD. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Assessed. Any other questions or comments or anything? I think we're we ready, Jeff? Okay. <laughs> so where where are the other part that's good? That would be it, it accurate on those also. So I, I'm going to show you this map, but I don't want to use it. But yeah. it's, a, it's a better map. So this is actually a taxing parcel right here. Um, it, this is owned by the state. This is a separate parcel. Is that the what we're to tell? That is right there. That's no. So that's that's concrete. That's a yeah. that, that's a building. Okay. Pad. This is two nineteen. Two nineteen also includes this thing, this piece of land called the point. Now is and that is we're not seeking to any phase rules for that particular yeah, part yeah. of the land at this point. Okay. How is that access? Is that access through the road on the on So the road? this it's very very so there's actually this would there's a there's a there's a curb so, cut here for yeah, this yeah. and there's a curb cut here for this that comes down. Yeah. 
Okay. Now, does Accurate own the the other parcels? They too? own all of this, and this this is the, this is yeah. the state. Okay. This is Black Rock Turnpike. Okay. So, and then this whole green space right here. So that's it's all the Humber and Conservation Coast, so it can never be developed. 20, 23 acres. Also includes, also includes this. So anywhere that's gray, it really will get yeah, developed. It's it's a locked in footprint. I mean, there's there's no real expansion yes. of, of the of the twenty three acre parcel of which eleven acres is um, set aside is encumbered with a conservation easement. <laughs> The first so, phase is the hotel. It would be the next phase. Yeah. yeah. Once you so get actually planning and zoning on board, when do you think you'll break ground on that? How far out are you? Yeah, I don't know. That's, yeah, we're still. So we are. I mean, this building is under construction right now, so we're we're mobilized and we want to stay mobilized on the site, right? We don't want to get started. Come back. Probably, come back. probably not earlier than. 2025. That's fair. Get that paper in And these are all apartments. None of these are going to be condos or anything. These right now they're right plants now, apartments. apartments. Yeah. yeah. Not that I yeah. know. Yeah. It's a mix of <laughs> hey, no, <laughs> Put that in the feedback, guys. <laughs> For sure. But I understand. Do we have a motion? Oh, did any other comments or Questions or anything? Do you want to take this one? You want me to do it? I think I, I think you should take this. <laughs> I'm not even going to try. There's a lot of moving parts here. Sure, I'd, like, <laughs> I'd like to make a motion to approve 160 and 219 Ash Creek <laughs> Boulevard, defined in the Lantech Sanitary Sewer Capacity Analysis Report, dated January 11th, 2024, contingent upon the completion of the of this motion. To allow the project to uh, connect to the Fairfield sewer system is contingent upon contingent upon the completion of the East trunk phases 1, 2 and 3. I and I fee to be applied to each phase. I and I fees will be assessed and based on the fees in effect at the time the permit is pulled and this approval is subject in effect with a 10 year period. Did I get everything 2nd. All in favor? Out of discussion. Oh, discussion. I'd like to discussion. One discussion. Good. Good plan. Yeah. <laughs> the on your on your motion, you have approval of the um or subject to um the subject to this approval is subject to the completion of the east trunk. That's correct. East trunk phases one to three. three. And I think what you guys were talking about was the additional delta is sub is subject. Yes, you're already they're already approved. They're already approved the 91 without any East Trunk connection. So but mine refers to it's defined in the report. It's defined in the report. What they're talking about. This is the additional, which is the beginning of it. Let me just read it. Please do. Defined in Land Tech Sanitary Sewer Capacity Analysis, which is the incremental dated January 11th, 2024. I think I did that right. Yeah. That their report specifically mentions that, the vested piece. Right. So the best of pieces behind us. Right. Okay. This is the. I, I mean, it, that's correct, but also we don't have zoning approval to build. Uh, yeah, it's got to come to us first anyway. Yeah, so then we then we get if, if we're pulling. I think by referring to the report. We're, yeah, you no, know, I just the incremental, right? If maybe I misunderstood. Maybe, Help maybe me. Maybe a note that says we understand the 2018 approval for the approved projects is is vested <laughs> and separate from this motion. Read your. Uh, Read it again, please. Just the top center. Motion to approve 160 and 219 Ash Creek Boulevard, defined in sanitary sewer capacity analysis report dated January 11th, 2024. And then, then this is subject to, or this is a conditioned upon. This approval is contingent upon completion of East Trunk phases one and two and three. I think it should, it should be like this increased Delta approval or this increased approval, this approval of increase. Increased. If you want to change my motion, make a motion to change my motion. I don't know that it's, I think you should take is I think that the report clearly calls out what's proposed. Okay. 
I don't. I. Yeah. It, his, his will make it more. Okay. I disagree. I, I just think it should be defined. So I think I would like to amend your motion to go to add in that this increase this the increased capacity from the report is contingent upon increased capacity. Right. Yeah. Identified, identified from the identified in this report. In report. Is 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 subject to the or, con or contingent upon completion of East Trunk. No, I got no, yeah. no. You, you you went off the increased capacity identified. This was you wanted the incremental. Is you want your first point was you wanted it. I wanted the increase. I wanted right. the delta. This increased capacity is contingent. I think so. No. Isn't it the increase in the flow from the prior approval? Is yeah, yeah, that's the increased capacity is incremental. Increased, increased flow, increased flow from the prior approval is contingent upon the rest. That's what I was thinking. It is, no, it's right. Say it again. Somebody was saying it. The increased, increased flow. flow prior approval. Contingent upon the completion of these trunks. Increased flow from prior approval. Only from the prior approval. Yeah, that's all you have to add, I think. It's contingent upon completion. There we go. Okay, so you've got two motions. He's got his adjust. I'll second. That one's, that second. Okay. That one's been seconded now. So now we have to. Either have a discussion or pull a vote on his change to the original amendment. What's the right way to do this? Okay, so, so call, call any dis discussion, the discussion, discussion on the amendment. Is, is there a discussion on the amendment? Of the amendment. I'm fine with the amendment. Okay, <laughs> so that so let's call for a vote on the amended motion. It's on the on the amendment on the amendment. On the amendment. It's it's on the amendment. amendment. Okay, so all in favor. All in favor. Okay. Unanimous. Okay, so now we're back to the main motion that was on the table. Main motion as amended. Right. So confused. So call for a vote. Call for either a discussion or a vote on the main motion as amended. Yes. Call for call for discussion. A discussion. Is there any further any discussion? Further discussion. Right. On the main motion as amended. Right. All right, so now we have to re vote or? Yeah, well, we're we're not, 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 we're not, 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 we re voted, we're going to vote. Yeah, we, so anybody on the fall? All we voted on was the amendment. Now we have now to we're going to vote on the original. Yes. Okay. Okay. So now we're voting on the amended. Oh, not logical. All right. All in favor <laughs> of the amended, of the amended motion. motion. Aye. 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 We got it. Aye. 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 Unanimous. All right. Amendment. Thanks so much, everyone. Thank Appreciate you. your time. Wait until, yeah. wait until you see the minutes. Until <laughs> <laughs> we see the minutes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, when they the Roberts rules, right? The whole reason for the Roberts rule. Absolutely. Oh, you guys made a mistake. Four hundred should not have been shared. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, the next item on our agenda is Bill business to discuss, act, and approve Spike Pierce Engineering Service to prepare a bid package to address having the secondary digester tank at the WPCF cleaned, inspected, and repaired in the amount of $33,500. Second. The motion. Yeah. Second by Chris. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Discussion? Yeah, Dennis, we have Dennis. I, I am here. Yes, if you have any questions, hey, absolutely. Dennis, thanks for sticking with us. No problem. It's very Street. interesting. <laughs> um, can you uh, give a quick overview of your sure. Uh, scope? Yeah, sure. Um, I was actually in Fairfield today. I met with John and his staff um, to go over the project. Um, we have started the project at risk, um, even though we don't have a signed agreement, because I know that you folks want to get this on the street. 
um, as soon as the weather breaks. So what we're doing uh, on this project is a sort of an abbreviated version of what we did the first time. Uh, this project will not require uh, the plant to be monitoring any tankage 24 seven. Uh, it's not gonna require a significant amount of labor uh, to maintain digestion uh, because this is the secondary digester. So the plan would be that the primary digester would continue to operate as a primary digester. Uh, we will take the secondary digester offline. Uh, we will temporarily pipe the overflow of the primary digester to, to some temporary storage tanks on site, uh, which will serve as the secondary digester while we are cleaning and repairing it. Um, so uh, one advantage that we have uh, here on this particular project is the secondary digester, the, the plant has the ability to draw that down uh, significantly. So we're not gonna be dealing with 600,000 gallons of liquid that needs to be processed. Uh, we may be dealing with something more along the lines of 300 to 200,000 gallons of liquid to be processed. So it should be a much quicker process. Um, the only uh, thing, other thing here is there's no pipe, there's really no piping and no mixers and no equipment in these tanks. Uh, but we are, what we are concerned about is there's concrete blocks. There's 24 concrete blocks that hang uh, off of some welded support steel around the perimeter of the cover. Um, and those concrete blocks balance the cover. It keeps the cover balanced. So uh, if you remember a few months back when we started, um, when we started up the primary digester and they started storing gas in the secondary cover, the cover was, uh, was on an angle, it was tilted. Um, there's some imbalance in the cover and we really just don't know what it is and we won't know what it is until we get in there. So, um, you know, there will be some level of repairs uh, inside the tank. Again, not to the level, the tank is not gonna be offline as long as the primary tank was. Uh, this project will have no impact on odors. Um, I do recommend that you notify the public just in case, but that's your uh, decision. Um, and also what we're gonna do while we're in there is we're gonna repair, there's some uh, specialty joints on the gas piping, they're swivel joints. They allow the cover to move up and down while maintaining a pressurized line to it. Uh, so we will be replacing those um, as part of the project. And we'll also replace the flame arrestor on this particular tank, similar to what we did on the primaries. And then finally, we're going to inspect all of the rollers and the tracks that allow the cover to move up and down um, with the liquid level and, and the gas layer. So uh, those will all be inspected and replaced. And then all the piping, and there's one pipe inside the tank, it'll be cleaned. And while this tank is offline, we're gonna replace some valves in the digester complex, just it'll be a good opportunity. There's some valves that the plant has trouble operating. Uh, so while we have the tank offline, we'll be replacing those. So uh, that's that's the gist of the project. Um, we're still, still probably the hardest part is figuring out how we're gonna process the sludge while that tank is offline. But again, another couple meetings with the plant staff and this should be ready to go by, I'm thinking March 1st. The bid package should be ready to go by March 1st. To be ready to advertise, yes. Yep. Ron has a question. Ron. What, 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 do you, what do you anticipate the um, duration is from start to finish on this? Yeah, yeah, so I'm thinking, um, you know, probably two to four weeks to set up uh, and get it all cleaned out. And then maybe another, I would say probably two months, okay. uh, roughly two months from the time we start till the time it's back online. And this okay. does not require, we don't need to wait for this to come to, to temperature or none of that. We don't have to do any of that this time. It's just a, just a tank. Because yeah, I'm sure that you're going to get some feedback from, um, the residents over there because of what happened the first time around. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. That's why it's like, you, do you say something? Do you not say something? It's it's something that we should discuss as as a group and, and decide how yep. you wanna proceed. 
Yep, I agree. From mid package would be ready in March. How long generally would it be until they get in there and do the work? Yeah, I mean, so last time they came within a month and they were starting to clean the tank out. So I does think. This have, does this have to go for finance and purchase things? So it's going to be it's going to be like six months easily, maybe. No, I don't, I don't think so. Dennis, this is John Marsilio. Hi, John. How are you? Um, so um, there's been some organizational discussions for WPCA, and the first selectman has asked me to implement some uh, organizational changes. And he had the town attorney uh, do a review of the relationship between public works and the WPCA board. And um, the one of the one of the outcomes of that was uh, the process for approving contracts. So uh, in the past, you would uh, offer your proposal to the board. The board would approve it. John Bodie could sign it, or whoever the superintendent was, and you were up and running. Now, uh, WPCA is going to be subject to the same processes that I am and have been and everyone else in town is, and it goes a little like this. Uh, this has, your proposal has to clearly stipulate that it's a not to exceed price. And I see you have your backup here with ours, but you don't have rates. So that's what our purchasing director is requiring. And once I have that, and I'm sure you can get that to me uh, in short order, we can uh, take that and it only has to be approved by the Board of Selectmen is what my understanding is because you have a master contract. Is, is that correct? Master contract. So this would be like a task order. So, so we do not have a master contract. That's why I drafted this contract. Okay. Well, yeah. um, that could be a problem. You know, I will bring this to the uh, purchasing agent tomorrow. Uh, what the purchasing agent said to me was that all contracts have to be signed by the first selectman. And the first selectman will sign contracts only if I give him a, a sheet that says I reviewed it and it meets all the, the uh, purchasing departments uh, requisites. So look, why don't you call me first thing in the morning? Call John, we'll get into three way and we'll talk about the way forward with this and everything else we have going on here. Okay. Sure. Now, the, the bad news is. You got to wait a day. The good news is. You, the board doesn't have to approve this. Okay, the purchasing agent has to approve it. And then. It'll go to the first selectman, and then it has to go. Actually, it has to go to the board of selectmen, and then the first selectman will sign it. Now, the board of the board of selectmen doesn't mean until the thirty first, I think. So there's going to be a little gap here. But in that time, I think what we have to do is format this with purchasing, so that we can turn this into a task order arrangement, and. Uh, and avoid having to uh, go out for RFQs and or anything so, else. So that's great, John. Um, I've I've been trying to get that to happen for some time, but can we? You had gone out for on-call engineering services about a year ago. Can can you use that RFQ to generate a master services agreement for Wright Pierce and perhaps other engineers to use at sure. your disposal? Yeah. So are you a selected vendor there? <laughs> I, I'm not sure. I, I never heard anything. Okay. I so don't know. I guess that means we're not. <laughs> I don't know the answer to that. Okay. You're on the list for on call engineering. Yeah, I know that. I don't know if is Ray Pierce on it. Yeah. Okay. 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 Chris. Okay. So call me in the morning. Okay. And I will, I will walk this through for you. No and, problem. Uh, 
we'll get it done as soon as we can, but there's a new sheriff in town and he's, his name is Bill Gerber and everything has to go according to what the, the town attorney says and the purchasing director says. So we're hostage to that. Okay. I got a, I, I got two things, Dennis. I got one thing for you, but maybe John, I just, never mind, Bucky. Sorry, Bucky, I, I got, I got a uh, clarification or just a question, I guess, is that the last attorney, Jim Baldwin, had a different opinion. Yes, he did. And I'm a little confused on where these different opinions are coming from now. And as a board, I don't think any of us was brought up on this, this new, new way of doing things. So this is kind of nation. This is like brand new. This has just happened. Uh, but at, at our meeting um, with nucleus of the of board members on December 12th, uh, these discussions took place with the town attorney and the first selectman and in uh, concert with the draft, which is still draft, operational organization facilities reports, um, it was determined that uh, by uh, attorney Pyers that the peers, the peers, peers. I worked with about 10 people of that same yeah. name. Called them that. Called them that until I was corrected. But okay, I said, so that's all right. I'll call you whatever you want to be called. <laughs> uh, so, anyway, look, they're, they're reformatting all of this. I'm here tonight to share parts of this with you because parts of it are still unclear to me. Uh, the division of, of uh, authority, I think I have an idea of what it is. Everything that happened here tonight to this moment is your purview. You approve that stuff. Uh, you stipulate whatever you want to stipulate. And I really don't have much to say about it unless you ask me or John what the uh, capacity of the pipe was or something like that. The other part of this that is your world is going to be rates, rate making. And uh, you get you get to review the budgets and um, I would have to present the budgets. So um, in terms of the uh, consulting uh, arrangements, it's, I mean, I've been doing this since I got here where you have to adhere to the purchasing departments uh, dictates and and uh, what it is new is that this new town attorney wants everything signed and approved by the board of selectmen and signed by the first place. So that's all new and all that is is time. It's just uh, but, but we have other issues with this I and I uh, portion of what is going on in the capital world. And I'd like to talk to you about that also. And I'd like to put this to bed in, in one night package with a bow on it. Yeah. But that's going to be Adam. Uh, yeah, Adam, uh, Adam's decision. So that's where I am. I'm kind of in the middle of this right now. And we're going to kind of, you know, we're in the deep end paddling around. And so we've got to kind of work our way through this. But um, again, this board has the right, this, this thing, you have the total right to approve, review, projects, connections, all of that. Um, and let's start with uh, some of this I and I work and we'll see where this goes. I'm sure there'll be, it'll become clearer as time goes on. We want, I want to be collaborative. But for the most part, uh, the first selectman wants to adopt uh, some of the suggestions that came out of the organizational plan, which places the operations of WPCA under public works. WPCF. Okay. WPCA. Well, um, now it's the WPCA employees because the F is the facility right so the PCA is the commission well okay let's 
Under the state statute, WPCA is commission. Yeah, but the WPCA employees. Or not. Yes, you have the right to hire uh, or approve, but you have to include the this, this collector system. So the F stands for this facility, doesn't it? Stands for facility, yes. Right. So it's more than the facility, so it has a more burning. Well, you change the definition of facility to include the pipes. Okay. Well, facility, well, what's the yeah, big deal? I really don't care. I don't either. But it's the facility. I'm just correcting you. These, the, <laughs> what you're saying is not WPCA, not the commission. Yeah. We have no employees at the commission. Good. <laughs> the court explains. Right. So the WPCF and the collector system now comes under the uh, management of public works. That's good. Yeah. So, Next. and uh, one of the reasons we haven't shared some of the reports is because in some instances, they're not applicable. For instance, when they talk about the inter, uh, they address uh, cooperation between various departments and those agreements and agreements ought to be approved by the board. Well, that contemplated a separate manager in place that required a charter revision and would answer directly to the first selectman, which um, is a moot point now. Disagree with that point. It doesn't require a charter revision. Well, then you can talk to Mr. Piers or Piers. Or Peer. Kill Piers. Either way, Rob Tellis had recommended two separate options. One was to have the WPCA or WPCF, the pollution control facility, be under the purview of public works. And the other option was to have a basically a public works director solely for water wastewater and as that, a counterpart. And that has yet to be and decided. Well, it sounds like right now it is. It's going under public works. Yes. There were advantages and disadvantages too. That should come to this commission. What? Any well, the report should come to the commission first. Yes, well, mission hasn't seen the report. Well, you've seen some reports. Uh, I have not seen the I've, final I've, official report. It's not been brought to this commission. I've not seen the reports, and everything is getting changed on us. Our 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 duty is to the facility. That's what it has on our duty. If things get changed, I think the commission has to do it because we're the end point right now. Well, Where, where's the where's the end point? Who's the public going to point their fingers to right now? We'll have all of the reports as soon as the final management um, structure has been determined by the first selectman. But then, who's taking responsibility? Because if we don't, who's is he going to be taking responsibility for for all the management and for the approving everything for all of the operations? The capital uh, and the like. But Just until, that. Until we have those reports and are going on it, I'm assuming we're going on the old plan. Which plan? What we've always been doing. Yeah, well, that's, that's how, been changed. How does it change without a vote? Well, with respect to the secondary digester, this is operations and maintenance task. Agreed. But now, we, now we just added three months to it. No, Adam. Maybe it did, but. That's just a fact of life. I don't think that we did. If, if anything, what Bucky was just talking about sounded like it would have simplified the process and that we don't vote on it. That takes one piece out, right? And uh, I mean, honestly, I think it, we should not be voting on O&M stuff. That, I mean, if I had my way, it would be- I think it's- John can make it up. I'm not disagreeing with it, but when all of a sudden someone, Bucky comes to us and says, oh, by the way, we're not doing this and we don't have any report. We don't have any. But that's any not going to happen. But well, we don't have anything. And now we're told that we don't, we're, we're not, this isn't under I preface. Review. I preface this by saying, you know, this is nation. It's all new. It's new to me. No, I, uh, and I, I understand. Okay. You're I'm doing what I'm told to do. I'm here to share with you what I know. There are elements of this that have not been solidified. And, um, you know, 
I'm I'm prepared to share these reports as soon as they're uh, germane to the structure uh, that the first selectman wants to approve. He has decided to adopt a lot of these. Um, uh, in other words, he has decided decided to adopt the path, uh, a, a format. There are items in the in the plan that are unrelated to that. Uh, decision, but until that gets adopted, I'm assuming we're going to how we've normally been doing. Well, you cannot go around the, the purchasing department's ordinances, no matter what you want to do. We never said we yeah. So, I'm going to walk that through. We're going to see what kind of hand grenades are in the way of doing that. I'm just letting you know that I'm dealing with John and, and, and uh, John here and John here. No, but don't, don't, no, don't get me, Buggy, don't get me wrong. I think. I think we, this is great that it, the public works is handling it. Right. I just don't. The way know, it's coming to. I don't feel that. The way it's coming. Actually, it's wrong. Okay. Right. That's fine. Correct. Listen. Why don't right. we? I'd like to make a motion to cut this conversation over. Right. It's outside the scope of the motion that's on the table. Okay. So the point. Yeah. We have a second. On and, yeah. yeah. I second it. And we have a vote. You got to take a second in a row. Yeah, second by Tom. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. So, okay. I have questions for Dennis on the motion that's on the table, which is the secondary which I, digester. Table. Yeah, which is the secondary digester. That's what we were working on, where is it? Dennis, a couple of questions for you. I didn't see, are there. Any opportunities for improvements or enhancements to the digester? Uh, there is not. Other than. Uh, there's no such thing as like controls that put on that lid that's floating that keeps it level or it sends an alarm to somebody if it's not level and causing a problem. That That's just an example. Yeah, I, I am not aware of of such of, of device. Um, the one thing that we are going that to look at. That was an example. Is, I'm sorry. Is there anything else that might we might want to be addressing? Yeah, I'm trying to look at putting a level monitoring device in there. That there isn't one now to measure the level, but yeah. Okay. And any additional safety opportunities that you see? Because I didn't read of any in your uh, proposal. I, I'm just. This is a hypothetical question again. So safety would be just. Just by repla replacing the the safety valve that's on the tank now with a new one. Okay, there's nothing else that Wright Pierce sees that can be incorporated as we have. Uh, you know, I, I haven't. You know, now that you say that, there's some handrail, some missing handrail up there and stuff that we could fix while we're up there. But I, I mean, yes, those are, could be ancillary like, to the project. Like that incorporated at least so we don't lose it. Any safety yep. issues that you that you observed? Sure. And number three, and this is, is there anything we can do to that digester structurally on the outside? You know, as I look at the, the plant upgrades that we may be doing, may not be doing, is there anything that we should be doing to increase the life of that digester while we have it emptied? I mean, I got to be honest with you, Joe, when we took the primary tank offline, the con concrete is 60 years old and it looked like no so uh, these tanks are i mean they're a hundred year tanks so okay well I'm i mean just, we'll I'm fix just the question is there anything that should be in your proposal that should be looked at by i mean no i mean we have in there that we're going to look at the concrete and we're going to repair it and we're going to fix the leaks and fix fix all that that's all part of the project yes okay and although we're looking at delay uh potential delays in going through BOS, Board of Finance, et cetera, et cetera. A time of year that's better than doing it, then it sounds like it's going to fall in the summertime. The way it sounded March and then three more months and then emptying it and doing everything. Is there anything that would preclude us from maybe doing this job in October, November when the neighbors are more inside? Uh, only if only if John says if his plant and his staff think it, it'll be okay until then, which it should be. Consider it, please. 
We'll talk about it. You're not I gonna, just you're not going to have order like you had with the primary because we're, we're we're processing digested sludge now, and that's what exactly what you're doing. Okay, we'll talk. Yeah. Chris, we were doing order. We were doing. Um, I think we talked about doing order testing. We held off until um, this year of May. Right. I think we were saying, why don't we do it when the, when it's warm out? Can we try to do? Can we try to have in the report that we're doing odor monitoring when we're doing it? And also, can we try to do our odor monitoring in May that we were going to just try to get a baseline of this? I think on the last six months ago, we said, why are we going to do odor monitoring when it's winter time? Let's wait till April, May, June. And I suggest that we try to do some odor monitoring so we get somewhat of a baseline. And then in the report, I think we got to have odor monitoring when they're doing the work just so or a contingency plan or something just in case we got to do something have we had any no order complaints since in how long labor day right but we know we know the order is going to come up we know there's going to be we don't know that it's going to come up i would i would plan that we should have something in place for order something just so we can tell if the residents call, just saying it's no well, more. That's than a good point. I'll tell you why, because there's other sources of odors down there. So if you had your own odor monitors, it, you could at least say that it's not Denali or it might be Denali or it could be the transfer station or it could be something else. Our odor monitors would be hydrogen sulfide monitors. They won't be able to detect what others are. No, but what I'm saying is by the process of elimination, if there's an odor down Fine. there, the, yeah, I'm okay with it. Thing. It's not ours. We have the point of figuring out. I think it's a waste of money, but I'm fine. I, I think we got to do something because, so then at least when we get the call saying there's been no increased hydrogen or no increased something as from before from normal operations. Okay. There's no question that this is very sensitive. Yes. It's very, it was a, an important issue down there and. I think uh, if we don't take every precaution to um, to uh, address that right in the beginning, we're fools. Yeah, we got to be upfront about it. We got to tell everyone what we're doing. I feel, and we got to we got to do order monitoring before, like what we we're planning on, and then have order monitoring during. So then at least we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know what there's. So that's fine. We're going to put part of this proposal. No, no, it shouldn't be part of that. We can, I think. But, but, yeah, no, RFP, RFP, yeah, there should be order monitoring on that. That's what I'm asking. Should it be part of right? Pierce putting it into their bid No, no, I don't think so. I, I think, think it should be the plant, to be honest. Yeah, exactly. And I think we were in between either doing a pilot test or even just buying a couple of our own devices. And so we got to dust that off a little bit. We don't have to dust it off till May. So. Dennis, this is Ron. Um, where did where did you uh, come up with the number thirty three thousand five hundred? Is that not to exceed that? I read that. Yeah, but, it is. Uh, it is not to exceed. But based on the discussion here about well, the the rail may have to be replaced or be missing, or whatever, is that the correct number? Because I don't like it when things go over what you're saying not to exceed. I. I don't think our right purse design fee has ever been exceeded, to be honest. Um, okay. But it's the contract would read not to exceed, and and we would be responsible for doing everything that's written in that contract. Um, okay. What I will say, guys, is listen. I, I'm I'm on the outside looking in. I uh, every municipality does things differently. The way that you're moving towards is is typical. It's pretty typical. I have to be honest. Um, so you let me know when you're ready. I'm, I've been working in town for, for since 28, 2008. I am going to get this project ready to bid. And when the contract gets signed, then we'll get paid. And if it doesn't get signed, then I don't get paid. So I just, from, from my perspective, I'm just going to push forward and get this done. Um, obviously, I can't send you a bill until it's done. So I'll do whatever purchasing wants however they want it um but i suggest uh if you want to go this route uh and undo task orders which is the easiest way to do it 
then you should have an on-call master services agreement for with all the engineers that you work with uh, moving forward. So okay. um, I, I, if you don't mind, I'm going to jump off, but I, I will call John Bodie and John Marson uh, sometime tomorrow. I do have to go to Torrington uh, in the AM, but I'll set something up and, and we can chat about this. Sound good? Sounds good. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. All right, gentlemen and ladies, take care. Hey, John, this is Ron again. Probably the yeah. most you've heard from me in a couple of months. Um, quick question. I haven't received any emails, you know, that a special email account that was, was set up for WPCA. Has anybody else seen any? I mean, are we getting anything from the residents? I have to check on that. Ron, I think the issue is right after they set that up, they put a new website up. And I don't think the new website carried it over. Ah. Serious. All right. I'll, I'll contact IT tomorrow and, and see what's up with that. I know. No, Matt doesn't want his. <laughs> yeah. I would like it to get completely yeah. shut down. Okay. I will check on that. I would say until, <laughs> until everything is uh, until everything is kind of normalized, I and mean, this this is what the accountability and responsibilities are for the uh, facility and for the uh, authority. Uh, you don't want to have emails coming in. I'd shut it down until you got everything cut, you know, buttoned up. Um, yeah, one more question. Sure. I'm just look, looking at the uh, the cost chart here, and it appears. I don't see any materials in here for repair. It's entirely labor costs. Does that make sense? We have the, the 33 5 is for right piers to do the design and the bid stuff. The whole repair and everything is construction. We don't know what we need to do yet. We don't know what uh, we need. It has nothing to do with this. Yeah. Yeah. And, and there is $350,000 in the operating budget. Right? In the operating for line 500. <laughs> in the operating. That we have to get approval for in order for the. <laughs> And the repair would be above that, right? Whatever it may be. So we do not have to actually act on item 5A, is that correct? No, it's not. We don't have to approve the 33.5. Okay. That's what it sounds like. I think we are, unless there's any additional comments or questions, not for Dennis because he's left, then we can move on to item 5B. I think 5A is to discuss act and approve. Right, but we just discussed that we don't have to approve. There's nothing for us to do there. Purchasing agent and the first selectman approved. So, I think as per the per the this, I think I think we're, we're only words, but approved meaning the commission has reviewed it and they're willing to do it. The purchasing side of it is between you and Adam and Bill, but I think this is addressing. Us approving the money. Okay, correct. I think that's all this is. So, do I have a motion then? The motion's on the table. It's been on the table. We went in twenty different directions, but oh. the motion is was on the table. So, before we got Dennis on the phone, are we voting on it then? Second. We've had the discussion. If the discussion's closed, then all in favor? All right. Unanimous. All right. Five B plant performance update. Okay. John. Just the reports are not final. We saw a few things that we could start doing to kind of give you an idea. I don't want to go way technical. I just want to give you a few certain parameters to see how the plant is doing key performance indicators. And and three of the ones that I that I keyed on were in our permit, BOD removal, biochemical oxygen demand, the oxygen required for the bugs to break down the organic matter, what it is we do. The permit says we have to remove 85%. September, we did 95, October 98, November 97, December 97. Doesn't matter the rain, but we're, we're good. Total suspended solids, we're supposed to remove 85%. Again, we're 96, 98, 98, 96. Very good indicators on how well the plant is performing. The nitrogen removal aspect of what the state implemented many years ago, uh, we're allowed 406 pounds per day of nitrogen going to Long Island Sound. 
So when it's not raining, like the end of the world, we averaged for November, we averaged 346. For October, we averaged 349. For November, we averaged 358. Now you throw December in when you've got 9.07 inches of rain, we averaged 731. So for the first three months, we're under. Anything we're under, we get credit for, under the 406. Once we're over the 406, then we lose credit. So since this was implement, implemented back in 2001, two, we've made money every year. So there is an ebb and flow. There is things that happen like nine inches of rain in one month and another, however much we got in January. So I don't want to get too technical. I don't want to fill your heads full of stuff. That's just, and I will adjust this as you tell me, if you want more information, I'll give you more. If you want less, I'll give you less. Yes, sir. You want the suggestion now, or do you want to just wait and talk about it after? All I'm saying is there's a dollar amount. You, you said the credits. Yes. So you should be able to give us a running total. We have 45,000 in the budget as revenue for the nitrogen credit. Give you a running total because they don't assign a dollar amount to the credits until the end of the year. It, it was, it was, it was more, and I, I'm using okay. the wrong terminology. It was more a money making operation when it was in its infancy. Right. Now that it's gone this far, they, they wait have a budget up there and they're, they're going to spread it. How many people are paying in? Got it. Whatever that money is, they dole it out. It. it all depends on where you are on Long Island Sound. A couple other of the things that were mentioned in the report that we looked at and said, hey, let's, is that was one of them. Uh, emergency contact lists have been updated, posted. Um, start safety meetings. So we're going to do that. I've kind of made myself the safety officer to get it going. Looked at the SOPs. I'm updating the SOPs that we've had for quite some time. We'll start doing that to have the crew sit down and do that. Um, also, um, they wanted the operation, the staff to get involved with organizations. I signed up everybody up for Connecticut WIA. 20 bucks a person cost us 380 bucks. Everybody's emails in there now. So they're getting emails about what's happening in the state. Trainings they can go to, boards they can sit on, stuff like that. Um, and that's all I got on that. So that's my brief little performance. Spectacular moment. <laughs> Thank you, John. Yes. Any questions? Uh, 5C, our new thing to talk about the. Yeah, I'm just mentioning to you. Yep. Add an agenda. Right? right, exactly. So, um, yeah, 5C was the agenda item I wanted. So, I guess, I mean, John had sort of alluded to it. The, so, some of the items that he was reading off of that whole plant performance update was one of the recommend, recommended items from the operational report that I understand most of the commission has not seen. Um, I think some of that is it's there was a dissemination issue in terms of communication from the ad hoc committee that I was a part of until now. And so I think hopefully within the next month, we'll probably be sharing that with the rest of the committee. I mean, right now, the organizational operation report was combined into one. That's now with the first selectman, HR and legal, maybe. I'm not sure. And then HR and legal. Okay, and so once they've finished reviewing, then I think we can fully disseminate. So you guys will know a little bit more about what John was talking about. <laughs> um, and so one of the reports, which I shared, I know it was just earlier today and it's 71 pages, but. This, uh, um, table 14 dash 1 from that report, um, provided. Watered and Kern's assessment of the treatment facility in terms of high, medium and low priority rehab options or in assets within the, the plant. And so um, in terms of high priority items, they came up with a rough estimate of $15 million in upgrades. And so as far as new capital improvement projects, I mean, Taking a quick step back, that's good news versus the 60 to 100 something million that had previously been identified as potential 
treatment plant upgrades. We're now down to a much more manageable 15 million in things that need to be done in the short term. Um, we can add in the additional, if we wanted to, we could throw the medium term in. We're still under 20 million in terms of plant upgrades. Um, so that's top priority in terms of treatment plant work. And then as we discussed, as Dennis discussed at our December meeting, there's 3 million in identified I and I repairs that should be done in terms of high and medium. And there's a brief summary of that in those four packets there. Kind of a condensed thing from the very large report that he sent that kind of gives you a kind of honed in view on the three right. million. And that right. got that's got the brief breakdown in terms of lining, point repair, etc. Just a point of clarification uh, in our budget mid hearings today. We did send all my budgets and I also presented the WPCA budget. Um, Caitlin was there and I asked her for a accounting of your fund balance. So I was under the impression from what uh, the previous chairman has said that there were there was a three million dollar budget for I and I and a fifteen million dollar budget for capital. Well, that's not true. There's one fund balance. It's seventeen million dollars. That's it. So when we begin to talk about um, the whatever capital we're spending, I mean what whatever's not budgeted in the operating budget, for for instance, for the uh, uh, the 15 million you were just talking about, which of course is not going to be in one year or maybe not even two years, but it'll be within 36 months, I would say, to 48 months, somewhere in there. Uh, and you have built in money that you're turning into the fund balance every year. I think, and if we say with that study that you just received in the INI piece where there's, there's two years where they're recommending a million and a half a million and round numbers uh i think you're in good shape and i don't think you have to uh rely on the town to, to accomplish what you want to accomplish with that said i have the discussion with the first selectman today in the course of this capital piece about the town's participation in uh, supporting WPCA in their capital needs. Uh, he's giving it thought, and uh, I made the point that, look, when we facilitate development by doing I and I work, or, uh, improving uh, you know plant capacity by I and I work. If it, tell, it facilitates uh, economic development, and everybody in town benefits from that, not just the great guys. So th there is a dynamic there, and he wasn't aware of that, and he is now. And I'm sure he's going to have those discussions. I don't know where and when or how much uh, they might be inclined to participate, but... Uh, will know shortly because I will keep asking him, you know, is is WPCA or WPCF? WPC had it right. <laughs> I mean, had it right. Will they, uh, will they be able to rely on the town to share the burden? So some percentage, some percentage of that ought to be considered. I don't know what, it, what a fair number is, but it all goes back to improvement and grand list because you devote that money to those uh, pieces of it. So, good news is it's, it, it's beneficial to you and your debt service going forward, at least for a couple years here, because you've got it covered in your war chest. Uh, and there are some unknowns. There still remains to be some unknowns. Uh, and I'm hopeful that in the next month, uh, concert with 
the first selectmen to go off this and there'll be discussions about how this finally gets solidified. And when that happens, after I know, everyone here know. As soon as I did. But this is all brand new. And I know these reports are they've been floating around. He's had his hands full. He hasn't had a chance to read them all and digest them and discuss them. So that's why there are some loose ends here. I don't like it any more than you do, but just the way it is. Right. So facility stuff, we still, I mean, that's in pretty early stages. I mean, we don't have any design. We don't have an engineer under contract. We probably need to go out to RFP to, and I don't know if it's a single package for design for that type of stuff. We were talking about potentially doing something besides just the traditional design bit built. So, I mean, there's a bunch of different project delivery considerations for that. For the I and I stuff, that's 3 million of identified repairs that need to be designed. We currently have a scope from Wright Pierce for $140,000 for design services for that 3 million in identified repair. I don't know whether or not we can move forward with that. My preference would be to sole source it to them. Nobody else can compete on time and cost given the knowledge that they already have on that. The sooner we get to design on that, the faster we can repair. And to your point, Bucky, I and I is something that absolutely impacts the entire town from a development standpoint, as we heard for the first hour of this meeting today, we are struggling to actually approve projects given the large amounts of I and I in our system. So yeah. So um I thought that the 141. We will talk about that, but this that doesn't have to be discussed here. But the million for a year for two years included a lot of design. Did it? Okay. I just know that I remember their scope was 141,000 to design the repairs that were identified in that. Right. So is this three million in I and I on the east side of town? It's all over. It's all over, it's all over the place. Yeah. And it's tough to actually see where it is in this. Well, report. I looked at this report and I can't tell where it is. Yeah, it's exactly. It's a bunch of well snapshots. Quite frankly, you would have to get the uh, electronic copy and put it on your computer, and that's how you would find that. Exactly. Um, <clears throat> and there is a nomenclature issue here where. So I'll go over that with you also. They're calling this phase six, when yeah. really it's the implementation of phase five. To me, it's phase five. But they started in 2014, 15. So the final design. It, like it was phase three five. phases weren't even I and I. Yeah, but that includes design or construction services. We don't even necessarily need them for that. So it sounds like it might be a redirection on both operating spending and capital spending. Right now, really, the, if you look at the priorities, and it, it's mostly our pump stations. Right. We're going to stop that, take the money, and move it towards I and I investment and the 15 million in plant. So that I don't know. Right. Well, that's up to us. Right. So I mean, it's the it's the worst time to do it. Right. Right when we're doing budgeting, and it's going to be. Yeah, the way that 17 million works because that's part of Jones operating, does it? I don't think your bill does either. But it changes. The town asked me today, I guess they got a new analyst, Sabrina. She yes. asked, yeah. she's no, putting, no. she's putting, well, some, I never heard of her, but she's new to me. She asked me, I gave her the old plan. Mm -hmm. Which doesn't if just if I just interpret what which plan you just the old capital plan. Yeah, but the waterfall. No, not based on a ninety-eight million dollar program. Exactly. That ninety-eight million is in there. That, this is where we're going. But that's but somebody should stop her then. <laughs> well, I, yeah. I think well, that ninety-eight should come out. Well, I and I think that that is part of 
this conversation okay. and looking at the charter again and the oversight of the town appreciating some of the price tags that okay. we're going out there to improve our infrastructure, which I think that we all appreciate that we need to improve this infrastructure for the health and safety of our residents and the future of this town in terms of growth. No question. Um, and it shouldn't necessarily. But she's, she's, using, she's using an old plan is yes. my point. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That's all I was saying. She's yeah. using an old plan. And quite frankly, I gave it to everyone you. agreed to have these reports done. That was one of the major benefits of it. I mean, everybody, including the first selectman, just went, Phew. that's like the air went out of the balloon because there was a lot of pressure on the capital plan yeah. Yeah. I mean, because of, uh, of the kind of numbers we were looking at. Now, I'm not saying that this is the be all and end all. And John and I had this conversation. There could be way more than 30 million that's here, but this is going to stop the bleeding. It's going to get you your UV stuff. It's going to get you the belt presses and all of that. And all of the major components are going to be addressed in this. And then we can start looking at other improvements. So that's a good, the I and I, I suspect is going to be a bear. That's what I suspect because uh, there's too many unknowns there. We can see what's in this what's in this uh, report on the on the facility. We can see that. I mean, that's easy to know. What's out in the field is not. It's below ground. You can't see it. All we can do is test and test and test. And I've done a ton of testing already. Then. You know, I worry about that though. It seems. Too many horror stories, but anyway, so the 1st thing we have to do is uh, collaborate on who is going to uh, be our consultants. We have to collaborate on delivery methods. It sounds to me like. Uh, the pitch to design. Uh, uh, bid build uh, the I and I piece. Is what we want to do what we're going to do on the. Uh, on the, uh, the plant per se is still have to be discussed. That has to be approved by purchasing. That has to be approved by the town attorney. It all has to conform with the latest uh, ordinances that have been adopted by the town in the last year uh, for purchasing. New purchasing policy. Right. Yep. It might be an ordinance. Yeah, it might be an ordinance purchasing ordinance. I thought they said this is the one that. Um, Chris, Chris yeah, was working on and you had you had uh, your auditor. Uh, policies whose last name began with a C working on. Yes, so. So this is <laughs> this is new for everyone. This is new for me, and consequently, it's new for you. But this is the way the first elected wants to manage the town. This is the way IBM wants to proceed. Not the way we we don't have a choice. That. But in terms, so out of my discussion for five C. Top priority would be figuring out a way to move forward on the INI design. That's it's low hanging fruit. It's not a ton of money. It's 150,000 to actually get the design package. Put together, figure out where the actual so construction dollars the come from. Steps are. I mean, put your hire a design self in my shoes. What is the process to hire someone? I mean, it's a great question. Talk to purchasing, <laughs> whatever. I mean. <laughs> I don't know what the answer is. I will. I'm happy to write a letter or an email, whatever, to say why we should hire. And I mean, I'm not thrilled with them, but for this, it's a no brainer to me. We should not be going to RFP. Okay, it would me slow it down. Back. Wouldn't get any value out of it. They already know way more than anybody else. Yeah, no pushback from me on any of that. It's based for itself. Exactly. What I'm, what I'm gonna. What I'm it's gonna, an easy sell. I mean, I, I gotta it's tell you, easy sell. sell. What I will do is I'll go and I'll, uh, I'll have a sit down with purchasing. I'll see how they want to proceed. Um, and, and, I'll, and I'll share that with you. Okay. And if you need something from me, let me know. I'm happy to provide, but if uh, my goal would be to try to get them under contract. 
I mean, ideally by next meeting, I don't know if we can work that fast, but that's what I would like for it to happen. It would have to be approved by or select. Mm -hmm. So be it. Well, select. It's 150,000. It's not, it's not huge. And if we have to chunk it, then it's more than 50. And I think 50 is the limit. Right, and that was what I had heard. And if that's the case, then I mean, I'm sure we can ask right. Dennis to put it, it into three close. packages. And look, at the end of the day, no, no, that's what they want to avoid. Don't, yeah, you don't want to lose control. <laughs> <laughs> Record is not so close. I'm fine with any. I mean, I can. <laughs> when I'm done with this, there's going to be a master contract, there will be a task order arrangement. That's the way we're going to proceed. It might take a little time in the beginning. We might have to do an RFQ. We might have to, you know, okay, but we're going to have a consultant and, and the consultant is, is going to, is going to start at the beginning and see us through and, uh, it'll be all in accordance to the town's dictum. Any questions or comments on that little. Report about new INI projects, plant and INI stuff. Well, all I heard was, I'm going to put a full board trust on it. I'm with you. Okay. Yeah. Um, I've been here since five o'clock this morning, folks. I didn't, it's the longest we've ever heard. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going home. Yeah. Thanks, buddy. For me? Um, item six, unless you have anything to contribute on current projects, pump station design and well, we already I talked say, about I can tell you that Brian was wrong about the design of phase one and two. That's going to be done in another 35, 40 days. Right. It'll be done by the end of February. So th th that the way he made it sound, it's like, uh, the design isn't even done yet. Well, it's closed. Yeah. Right. You saw the bids on the, on the uh, Turning Creek. They came in under budget. Six million and change instead of seven million and five or whatever it was budgeted. So that's good for every. Um, so that frees up money for a project. Except for that much. Added. Part of it is. Yeah, just the uh, siphons. Oh, right. Um, seven hundred and eighty-four dollars now. Eighty-four thousand now. Yeah. It's a bargain. <laughs> and uh, yeah. but then we're we're combining the. He's chunk in that, so then we get better bit. Yeah, yeah. Than that one. No, that no, one. no, not that one. Phase one and two, the East Trunk Main Line and the West Wetland Creek crossing. The Wetlands Crossing. Those are the two that are combined. Those this are one the... is a conservation project. Oh. And we only have the site. No, also no but I mean the one, the first engineering project, yeah. Yeah. but the WPCF project. <laughs> but, um, uh, yeah, one bid on the Wetland Crossing. We had to get rid of the, an engineer. We re-engage another. Engineer. All right, man. Ladies. Uh, so are we done with the current projects then? Uh, yeah. Did John? No. What? Wait. Pump stations? Pump station design. Well, I'm on that. I got that. Cool. Okay. Thanks. I got good news and then I got better news. Okay. Um, phase two, which is the four. The engineer has been there. They've done pump downs on the on the stations with and flow analysis and all the structural stuff. So they're moving forward on that. We just got a, a, a letter back from Connecticut Deep saying that the design that Ty and Bond sent for the first three is in has been approved by them and could be eligible clean water fund place. It's not guaranteed. It's just what Ty and Bond sent them. They like it. It's eligible for clean water funding and we are on the list. Good. So, so that's 2% borrowing. Yeah, I, I don't know exactly what it is, but, but it has six strings to it. Strings on it. But 2% so these days. That's when I had good news. You guys are poo pooing something. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's good news. Pursue it. Pursue it. Grant money. It's just, you got to pay the money back. Yeah. Well, you got to give them the money back on the end. It's still good news. Nothing life of, you got to use their. Yeah, uh, okay, so that's all I got on that. And I want to go to my passes.
Yes, status update on bypass. And yes, well, with all the rain, our normal Haley Avenue um, happened the first big rainstorm of January, and then the second one, which was last Friday and Thursday into Friday, Friday into Saturday, with Haley as well as Grassmere over by Old Depot. I do not do that. I do not have the total number of gallon in. I left that piece of paper on my desk, but. It was all reported to the D. They have since stopped and, and let's hope for a drier than normal yeah, dry spring. <laughs> yeah, right. My cell phone is having fun. We're still at 16 million. Still? Still. still. Four inches of rain. Oh, it's just <laughs> um, motion to adjourn. Um, there we go. Okay. All right. Favor. Aye. Aye. Thank everybody. Is this the start of your chairmanship? Yeah. Now we get the longest meetings. Seriously. I don't know. Put an hour too long. Why wait for protocol? <laughs> <laughs>